Hello students, I welcome you in today's session of physics and in physics I am going to uh, take your today application of Pascal law. this thing we had already covered out in our lecture number 1. This is the lecture number 2 and today we will discuss what is the principle of hydraulic machines because it is based on the principle of Pascal law. So the principle of each hydraulic machine is that a small force applied on a smaller piston is transmitted to produce a large force on a bigger piston. You can see this from the figure number 6.5 this one which shows the two cylindrical vessel P and Q connected by the horizontal tube that is capital R. So the vessel contain a liquid or a water and they are provided with a water tight piston A and B. So the vessel P is of a smaller diameter than the vessel Q. So let us supposing the area of the cross section of the vessel P be A1 and that of the vessel B A2. Q is A2. So A weight is placed on the piston A if it exerts a force F1 on the piston A. Therefore, the pressure is applied on the piston is how much? Pressure is equal to force by area which is F upon A1. Clear? You can see here this both the tubes are connected with a horizontal pipe. So according to the Pascal law, the pressure exerted on the piston A is transmitted through the liquid to piston B. Fine? Thus the upward pressure exerted on the piston that is P2 equals to P1 that is F1 upon A1. So hence the upward force exerted on the piston B is F2 and the pressure on piston B multiply by A2 so you can write it F2 is equals to F1 by A1 or multiply by A2 so F2 upon F1 that is A2 by A1 clear now since A2 is greater than A1 therefore F2 is greater than F1 so thus a small force F1 apply on the smaller piston A can be used to produce a larger force F on the bigger piston B this is the principle of hydraulic machine now what is the example of hydraulic machine so hydraulic press or Brahma press this way so I hydraulic press work on the principle of Pascal law then the construction you can see here it is given that in the figure this is the construction of hydraulic press now you can see here uh, what is the construction if we talk about so this figure this one shows the hydraulic press it consists of two hollow cylinder P and Q from the figure you can easily understood what are the cylinders this is the P1 and this is the Q1 so fitted with the valves V1 and V2 so at their bottom so the cylindrical P has a tank or a reservoir at the bottom which is connected to the valve V1 the area of cross section of the cylinder is Q is larger than that of P so water tight piston that is A and B are fitted in this cylinder so let the area of the cross section of the piston A and B be A1 and A2 respectively so the two cylinders are connected by the pipe which is your R the piston A of the smaller cylinder is called the pump plunger and the piston B of the larger cylinder is called the ram or press plunger. So to press down or raise up the pump plunger, a lever arrangement provided with the handle edge is used. So the cylinder Q at its bottom is connected to the tube through release valve which join it to the reservoir. Now what are the principles? So if you can see the principle when a force F1 is applied on the piston A, it exerts a pressure on the liquid which contained in the cylinder P. Now according to the Pascal law, this pressure is transmitted to the liquid in the tube R to the piston B is of the uh, of the other cylinder Q due to which the piston B tend to move upward fine now since the area of the cross section of the cylinder is P so is less than, than the area cylinder Q therefore by applying a small force on the piston we can lift a large weight kept on the piston B so if no weight is placed on the piston B it rises up against a fixed uh, roof with a force F2 which is greater than F1 so if the bale of cotton is kept on the press plunger B it gets compressed now there is a working given here what is the working so you can see here when the pump plunger A is raised by raising the handle H the valve V1 open upward because the pressure in the cylinder P decreases so as a result water from the reservoir tank is pushed clear up into the cylinder P by the atmospheric pressure acting on the free surfaces of water in the supply tank when the pump plunger A is pushed downward by lowering the handle H then the valve V1 closes due to the increase in the pressure in the cylinder now the pressure from cylinder P is transmitted to the connecting pipe R so as the pressure in the pipe R becomes greater than in the cylinder Q the valve V2 opens clear 
So the water from cylinder P is focused into cylinder Q due to which the press plunger B is raised against the fixed roof and the bale of the cordon placed on the press plunger B gets compressed. So when the function of the machine is over, the release valve is open so that the ram or the press plunger B get lower and the water in the cylinder Q get runs into the reservoir. Now what are the uses? Just see the uses of hydraulic press. So a hydraulic press is used mainly for the following purpose. The first one for pressing the cotton bales and good quilts, books, etc. The second one for extracting the juice of a sugar cane or a sugar beet. The third one for squeezing the oil out of the linseed and cotton seeds for engraving the monogram on goods. Now see the second one, what is the hydraulic jacks. So the hydraulic jack is used for lifting the heavy vehicles such as car, trucks, etc. in service station. So for the repairing it work on the principle of the principle of hydraulic machines. Just see the construction. This is the hydraulic jack. So a simple form of hydraulic jack is shown in this figure. It consists of the two cylindrical vessel. You can see here P and Q which has connected each other by a tube bar having a valve R. This one is the R and this is the valve. So the piston A in the narrow cylinder P is attached to the lever and the piston B to the, of the wider cylinder Q has a platform for lifting the vacuum. So the vessel are fitted with a liquid. Now what is the working? So when handle H of the lever is pressed down by applying the effort, the valve V opens because of increase in the pressure in the cylinder. So the liquid run out from the cylinder P out to the cylinder Q as a result, as a result the piston B rises and it raises the car placed on the platform. So when the car reached, reaches the desired height, the handle hatch of the lever is no longer pressed. So the valve V gets closed since the pressure on the either sides of the valve so that the liquid may not run back from the cylinder Q to the cylinder P. Clear? Now we will discuss about what are the hydraulic brakes. So the hydraulic brakes used in cars are also based on the Pascal law. The see the construction, this is the hydraulic brakes. So figure 6.8 shows the hydraulic brakes arrangement of a vehicle and it consists of a pipeline R containing a liquid. That is R. Here this is the pipeline which is consisting of liquid. So one end of the uh, which is connected to the master cylinder P fitted with a piston A attached to the foot pedal. The other end of the pipe is connected to different wheels of the uh, vehicle. So figure 6.8, only one wheel is connected for each wheel. There is a wheel cylindrical uh, Q having two piston B1 and B2 attached to the brake shoe. So the area of cross section of the wheel cylinder Q is greater than the area of cross section of the master cylinder P. So the brake shoe press against the rim of the wheel. Now come to the working of this. So to apply brakes, the foot pedal is pressed due to the uh, which pressure is exerted on the liquid in the master cylinder P. Clear? So the liquid run out from the master cylinder P to the wheel cylinder Q as a result the pressure is transmitted equally and undiminished through the liquid to the piston. So B1 and B2 of the cylinders Q therefore the pistons B1 and B2 get pushed outwards and the brake shoe get pressed against the rim of the wheels due to which the motion of the vehicle retards. Now since the area of cross section of the piston A is in the master cylinder P is less than that in the wheel cylinder Q. So a small force apply at the foot pedal produces a larger force on the piston B1 and B2 of the cylinder Q. So this force is responsible for retarding the motion of the vehicle. So it should be noted that due to the transmission of pressure through the liquid, equal pressure is exerted on all the wheels of the vehicle connected to the pipe R. Now on releasing the pressure of the pedal, the liquid run back from the wheel cylinder Q to the master cylinder P and the spring pulls brake shoe to their original position and forces the piston B1 B2 to return back into the wheels cylindrical Q. Thus the brakes are released. So this is the principle of hydraulic brakes. Clear? So I hope you understood what I taught you. So this is the end of the chapter students and the remaining chapters and the topic we will discuss in our next lecture. So till that do study. Thank you class. Thank you very much.